What's up, guys? I hope everyone is okay. It has been difficult to travel lately, but a year ago we had the chance to visit Costa Rica for two weeks. When we came back, I made a short video about that trip, just as a memory for ourselves. But when our friends watched the video, everybody was like, oh, it must have been very expensive, or uh, you maybe gave it fortune for that trip. Well, actually not the case. In this video, I will try to take you day by day with us, show you what we did, where we went, and most importantly, how much we spent. Our trip started from Crete, Greece, then Athens, then Berlin to take the flight to San Jose. Having planned to see many places, we wanted to relocate as much as possible. So we decided to rent a car. Looking on the internet, even now, to make some screenshots for this video, you can find some very good prices. So we're very glad to find a, a car for $100, that was 91 euro, for two weeks, for three persons. But after arriving in the airport and going to pick up the car, we found out that you must have an insurance that they give you, not the one that you can buy online, like we already did. We found a very cheap insurance, it means nothing. You have to buy their own insurance, which costs $600, 545 euro. In the beginning, we were surprised, but knowing that it would be difficult to move around with transportation or buses or taxis, we decided to suck it up, take the car and start our trip. So for transportation for two weeks and three persons, we paid $100 for the rent, $600 for the insurance, and $200 in gas. Knowing that we arrived late in the afternoon and it will take some time to finish with the car, we booked the house for the first night at the city of Alajuela, just 15-20 minutes drive from the airport. We found on Airbnb Casa Los Laureles, a house that we liked a lot, with two separate bedrooms, parking, and snacks to welcome us from the host for only $24 per night. Next morning, although initially we planned to go to Irazu Volcano, the forecast that day was showing that it would have many clouds on top. Plus, it would be on the opposite direction of where we were going next, which was La Fortuna. So, we headed to Poas. To get to Poas, you have to buy your ticket in advance online. It costs $20 per person. If you don't buy it online beforehand, you will not be allowed in. Once there, you will wait for the group to assemble in the entrance, then walk 10 minutes to the crater, spend max 20 minutes there because of the gas on the volcano, and then 10 minutes to walk back. Keep in mind, you're not allowed to fly a drone. Then we continued northwest to La Fortuna, where we would spend three nights. We booked on Airbnb a very cute yellow house, Casita Yellow. It cost $115 for three nights. It had two bathrooms. It was at the outskirts of La Fortuna city, and on the backyard, you were into a park full of birds, colibri, and howler monkeys. Right after we dropped our things in the house, we took a walk in La Fortuna City for some groceries and to book some tours and activities for the next days. We came across Eric and he made us a very good deal and we got three tours from him. The sloth tour, zipline, and canyoning for the next days. He owns the agency Volcano Lake Adventures. You will find the link in the description and we highly recommend him because he was very helpful and he gave us a very good deal. La Fortuna, and in general the area around the Renal Volcano, is also famous for the hot springs. There are many hotels with facilities to enjoy the hot springs, but there is a place that you can enjoy the hot springs for free. So after we finished booking our tours for the next days, we drove roughly 20 minutes to the Tapacón area to see the hot springs for ourselves. Just park after the Tapacón resort and you will not miss it. Soon, some guys in vests will approach you and ask money to take care of your car. They were asking for $5, at the end we gave them 4 Apparently, it's not as comfy as a spa resort, but it will save you around 70 to 80 bucks per person. Another spot that you can have fun for free, near La Fortuna, just 5 minutes away, is the jump, El Salto. You can swing with a rope, jump in the water, which is not hot, but still it's fun. Next morning, we had fun with the Arenal Mundo Aventura zipline. The price was $55 per person. In our group, it was just the three of us, with two very cool guides, and we had lots of fun. We chose this company because one of the lines passes over La Fortuna waterfall and also has the longest line in the area of about one kilometer. You can make your research before you go and choose the one you like most. Keep in mind that when the adventure starts, you need both hands free, so you cannot have with you anything that you need to hold. If you do have something that you need to leave behind, you pay $2 to rent a locker. The same day in the afternoon, we did the sloth tour. It's in a small park, just 10 minutes walking from La Fortuna area, where a guide showed us around some toucans, sloths, and colorful frogs. It cost $25 per person. Next morning was the day I was excited for since we were planning the trip. Initially, we asked to book us a canyoning with a company we saw online while researching for the trip. But that day they were full, so he had to pass us to another agency. And that was the best day we had in Costa Rica. 
We met Jairo and David who won my kick adventure and they took us to the area of Arenal for some crazy rappelling in insane scenery. Personally, I'm afraid of height, but I felt very safe and I enjoyed every moment of it, especially the last waterfall, which is 60 meters high. The adventure cost $75 and I really recommend these guys. They love what they are doing and they are very good at it. At the end of the rappelling, there was lunch included in the price and they took us in a soda in the middle of nowhere and we had the best cassado we tasted in two weeks in Costa Rica. The same day in the afternoon, we drove to the mystical Arenal Hanging Bridges Park. It was a very cool park with the bridges and all. We saw many monkeys and coatis, and we had great views of the Arenal volcano. It cost $26 per person. Next morning, we left La Fortuna area after three wonderful days. Next stop, Rio Celeste. Not much to say for one of the most iconic spots in Costa Rica. The entrance cost $12, plus $2 we paid for the parking. And this is one more place that you cannot fly your drone. After enjoying Tenorio Volcano National Park, we left to Rio Naranjo. We didn't plan to do anything there, it was just to split the distance between Rio Celeste and Playa del Coco, where we want to go next for diving. A simple but beautiful house that allowed us to rest in a quiet environment. It cost $25. At this point I want to say that we didn't take any money for the places I mentioned, it was just our own personal experience. We were very glad and pleased with the service. Uh, we didn't sleep anywhere for free, we didn't get any free dive. It's just our own, own opinion. The links are in the description below if you want to check it for yourself when you plan your own trip. Having said that, next morning we left to Playa del Coco. We went to dive initially to the Bat Islands, check some bull sharks, but it was further away and more expensive. So we changed our plans to dive at Catalina's Islands. The diving spot there is famous for manta rays. Barbara has hundreds of dives, but never seen a manta ray. So for her birthday, we want to check some of them. And for me, the plan was to make for her a new profile picture with a manta. Once we started asking in diving centers, we found something very interesting. If you make the same dive from Playa Flamingo, it costs $20 less per person. Plus you're on the boat for 45 to 60 minutes less, which is a lot if the ride is choppy. So we drove for 45 minutes through a very bad road to Playa Flamingo and went straight to Rocket Frog Diving Center. Once we booked a dive for the following morning, we enjoyed the beach for a couple of hours and then we drove around the area in order to find a cheaper room somewhere out of Playa Flamingo. We came across Hostel Santa Esmeralda, which was in a quiet area 15 minutes away from Playa Flamingo. The price for the dorm for the three of us was $45. Next morning we drove back to the hotel, very stoked to see mantas for the first time. In the first dive we didn't see any, but we saw many wet tip sharks and lots of colorful fish. In the description below you can find a link to our video from our dives in Costa Rica. During our second dive at the South Point is where the magic happened. I think dive masters know that for sure you will see mantas there and it's always the second dive. It was a unique experience. If you're a diver in Costa Rica and you didn't have a dive before with mantas, I highly recommend this place. It costs $110 per person and we still talk about it. And Barbara got her profile picture. After the dive, we left the beach to Monteverde area to check the cloud forest. We found a cheap Airbnb house for $64 for two nights. By coincidence, we found out that behind the house is this strange ficus tree, which is even on Google Maps. Next morning, we visited the cloud forest. Not Monteverde Cloud Forest, which is the most famous in the area, but Santa Elena Cloud Forest Reserve. It costs $16 per person, almost half the price of Monteverde. We enjoyed it a lot, and while taking the long trail, we hardly met anyone else. Next morning, before leaving Monteverde area, we took a hike on Celos Amigos Peak. This hike is for free, there is no park entrance. We just drove our car to Hotel Bermar, and from there we walked for about an hour to the peak. Unfortunately, that day was cloudy and we didn't have any great view, but the walk was very pleasant. After the walk, we headed south to Manuel Antonio, but first we stopped at Tarcoles Bridge to check the crocodiles. It's a very impressive sight to watch them from above the bridge, and there is also a crocodile tour done on a boat, but we decided to go on and do that on the last day on our way back to San Jose. So we went back on the road to drive to Manuel Antonio, but we didn't book a room there. We booked it in Quepos. The prices were like half compared to Manuel Antonio and it's only 15 minutes drive away. This is an example of the flexibility that the car can provide you in this type of trip. We found a simple hotel in Quepos and for two rooms we paid $50 for one night. It was okay for the price, but being on the main street made our night very noisy. The idea was to spend just one day in Manuel Antonio to relax and not so much to stay and enjoy the ocean and the beach. Coming from Crete, and we have wonderful beaches here, 
It's not what we were looking for in this trip. We didn't visit the national park, but we had a lot of fun on the beach at the end of the road with the monkeys. In the afternoon, we left to the south, to Puerto Jimenez. Here we stopped only for half an hour to buy provisions for the next two days, which we would spend in Bolita Rainforest Hostel, one of our trip's highlights. It's eco-friendly, you are surrounded by the jungle, there are many trails that you can walk around and see many animals and waterfalls. Very beautiful moment was the morning walk to Gotogo to watch the sunrise. Or you can be lazy in the hammocks, watching macaws and toucans flying over your head. The rooms are not separated by actual walls. One side is open to the jungle, like the showers and the toilets. You need to know that to go there you need your own food for as long as you stay. Also a torch for the night, because there are many animals walking and you might step on a frog, a toad or a snake. You will either love it or hate it. In our case, we loved it and we were very glad to stay there for two nights. The cost for the double room for two nights for $70. Next morning, we started for our biggest driving challenge during our trip. We wanted to get to Drake Bay. Our plan was to dive there at Isla del Caño. To get to Drake Bay, you can either take a boat from Scherpe or drive through a very bad road. If you have a 4x4, you will not have any problem, but in our case, we had a low sedan. Some locals that we asked, including Ron, the owner of Polita, told us that since it was a dry season, we had good chances to cross. So we decided to give it a go, and if we find any hard problem, we would just turn around. The toughest part are the last 20 kilometers in a very bad road, full of potholes and involving crossing in several rivers. The most difficult river to cross would be the last one, and we would know only too late if we can cross it or not. But thankfully, we asked some locals on the way and they told us at this point to turn left. And so we were able to cross the last and toughest river over a bridge. Once we arrived in Drake Bay after our adventure, we looked for a place to stay. We found Casa Tucan. Alberto, the owner, was probably the most polite guy we met in Costa Rica. One room for the three of us cost $50. And since we had a room for the evening, we went out to find a dive center to plan diving for the next day. The personnel at Costa Rica Adventure Divers won our hearts. We found in the office Pia, with whom we made a deal for the next day, to dive at Isla del Caño. To give you an idea about the diving site, the best dive in Costa Rica is at Cocos Island, where Isla del Caño has the nickname of Small Cocos. The dive cost $120 per person. It was a unique experience. The two divers we had that day, Federico and JP, only made the experience even better. And again, if you want to check our dives from Costa Rica, the link is in the description below. Who knows, maybe when you dive there, you will be lucky enough to see also a hammerhead. After this great dive, we left Drake Bay to Nauyaka Falls. We were now more confident about the road, so without problem we arrived to Platanillo. That's where we booked the house in order to visit the next morning the waterfalls. Again, the place there was much cheaper compared to the beach side. It cost $30 for one night and it was just 10 minutes drive from Naoyaka Falls. When you get to Naoyaka, you need some time to walk to the falls. So it's worth paying $1 for the parking, which will allow you to get closer. Costa Rica has many waterfalls. The only one we saw early in the trip was Rio Celeste, which looks very inviting for swimming, but it's not allowed. Naoyaka is a perfect place to do that. The entrance costs $10 per person, and then you need to walk for about 30 to 40 minutes to get there. Make sure you don't stay only in the lower waterfall where most of the people swim, but you also go to the upper waterfall. After a great start of our last day in Costa Rica, we would close our trip with a crocodile boat tour, a Tarcoles River. Apparently the traffic we never met for two weeks and the one we read about that Costa Rica is famous for sometimes happened only the last day. So we missed the last boat tour, just stopped in the bridge to watch the crocodiles one more time and then started to Alajuela. At this part we met even worse traffic. A distance of about one hour took us over four. Eventually we got to Alajuela, we stayed at the same house like we did the first night, only that this time was even cheaper on Airbnb, it cost $21 for one night. And this is how our wonderful two-week trip in Costa Rica came to an end. And time for a detailed cost breakdown. Let's start with a car. We drove over 1500 kilometers, that's more than 950 miles, mostly on the west side of the country. As we said, the rent was $100, the insurance was $600, gasoline was $200, some dollars were here and there for parking, so in total it cost $300 and change per person for 14 days. Regarding accommodation, during 14 nights, we slept at 9 different locations. The prices were ranging per person from $7 to $17 per night. We were always looking for a place that has a kitchen. The total for accommodation per person for 14 nights was $171. Regarding food, 
since we were always having a kitchen where we stayed, we were getting some groceries to make our own breakfast every day and sometimes dinner. The rest of the day we were having snacks or some street food and especially cassava. The total cost for food we estimated was around $250 per person. Now regarding the entrance to parks, which is a big thing when you travel to Costa Rica. The total price for five parks was $84 per person. Regarding the activities, we were looking forward to diving in Costa Rica, but also all these extreme type of activities that you can do there. For three activities and diving in two different locations, we paid $385 per person. So per person, the total cost for 14 days with transportation, accommodation, food, activities, gas, whatnot, was $1,192. Thank you for watching the video. I hope we managed to give you some ideas and tips for when you plan your own Costa Rica trip. It's a fantastic country, for sure we'll go back there one day. I will probably make a Madeira video similar to this because we traveled there back to back for a week after Costa Rica. If you think we can help, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And if you plan to visit Greece, and especially the island of Crete, make sure you subscribe because this is where we've been living for eight years and we're making a lot of content like this. Thank you again and hope to see you soon in the next video.